Hello and welcome back to the final stream before PAX. So over the weekend, a really long weekend, uh, I put lots of hours into it and finished all of the cables. Um, this morning I uh, pressure tested the loop with air and filled it on camera this afternoon so you'll be able to check that out. Um, didn't fancy doing it live but as it happened it went really smooth, um, no problems whatsoever. Uh, leak test passed at half bar and filling was straightforward. Uh, the loop, uh, the the build itself posted and all of the hardware shows up, but we won't have time to install an OS. And since there's no software required, all the fans are static, all the lighting is static, then there was no real reason to install one before packs. So it's now ready to leave. Um, and we can catch up, uh, show you everything that happened, and say goodbye. Uh, good to see you in the chat again, Snaf, Hi, Horst, and Ryan. Um, so the biggest amount of work in it by far was the 24-pin uh, power cable, and this took probably six, seven hours in itself. You saw we did the uh, eight pin EPS on the stream and it it wasn't so time consuming, but that was just eight straight wires that all go to a uniform place. Um, so GPU cables were about twice as long because they're 16. And then you think three times as long for the ATX, but because they go to uh, a 10 plus 18 pin on, on the CVGA power supply, it was really time consuming and there are three double Ys in there and everything just crosses over. So to get it looking this uniform and held in place from the motherboard to curve down and then through uh, and, and still kind of hold its place on the backside without bulging out of the case was a challenge, but we did it. Um, so yeah, glad, glad you could, uh, all join us today. So overall it was a pretty smooth build. Uh, m most of the difficulties came just because I was trying to film it, try and show it to you guys and, and not hide it. So, uh, yeah, like when we were putting the radiator in on the backside and the tubes were hitting each other, I think normally I would have would have spotted it, but not like looking around every side. I didn't quite see it. It's in there now. I gave it a good check uh, off camera. The tubes don't hit, so it's all nice. The pumps picked up really good from from filling it. Uh, host, how did you splice parts of the cable? Just soldering and heat shrink. Yeah, so I um, basically it was really complex. I cut 24 wires that were all long enough to get from here to the furthest point on the power supply. So they they were all long enough, uh, and then I put them in one by one on this end. So pin one, pin two, pin, uh, and threaded them through to the uh, through the like the plate in the case and then threaded them through an old um, 24 pin crimp housing so pushed them through uh, and s drilled a hole through it so they were just tight uh, and when they were tight in the first place I then did that again when they, where they go through the second place and put all 24 wires through and had them all and set the the wire like the right length and then taped it up at the bottom so they couldn't move uh, and then when I had the kind of top half completely set and all the wires right and I'd like pulled each wire through just the right distance that they would have the right curve uh, then I took from the position they went on this like marked up 24 pin that was then hanging out underneath the uh, underneath the Kate's mid plate and took from okay this is pin one and it must go to pin six this is pin two and it must go to pin nine this is pin three and it must go to two different pins uh and then cut every single one 
uh, the double wires, which that was three, I made it go to the furthest one and then uh, cut around the insulation of the wire just once and pushed it apart and then uh, closed the wire up so there was a hole, put another short piece in that, wrapped it around and soldered and then I had like two ends on that one. Uh, so it was like still one continuous cable but with another wrapped on for the second one. Uh, welcome, uh, thanks Neff. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy the, the colors are so unique so I, I'm, I'm really pleased with the look. I didn't have much time. Uh, I was kind of worried because, you know, I couldn't do anything wildly custom. I don't have any uh, bespoke parts in it, but I managed to do what I could in the time with the special finishes and satin titanium and the carbon turquoise lent itself so well to that harsh black silver contrast. Uh, tech. by the way, the quantum inertia D5 pump will fit just fine. Just remove the white ring. Uh, yeah, I know it, it will fit just fine, um, but the extra length like pushes the front face forwards and then where uh, 290s usually line up from from this terminal at the base of the distro down is a straight line if you have the right size pump. So uh, because I could get them, like because I'm here, I found probably the last two to go with the last 909. So. Host, yeah, so, so much work in the 24 pin. I can't wait for uh, ATX uh, 12v0 spec to kick off and we can just make a simple 10 pin and <laughs> one wire to turn it on. All of the 5 volt and 3.3 volt and negative 5 volt rails that aren't really used anymore make so much extra work. So it, it would also be nice if the power supply side was unified, but again. I get why they do it, so uh, yeah. I find the EVGA units quite friendly because they at least have a distinction between CPU and PCIe. That's, that's something I always look for in a power supply. Uh, whereas uh, some Corsair and Seasonic units, they have no distinction. So at the power supply end, you can use either a CPU cable or a GPU cable in that port. And that means they must have the wrong pin out. And somewhere there's a double wire in your PCIe cable or a double wire in the APS. So I, I like that they don't have double wires on at least some. Uh, and the 24 pins, not too bad when you've done it. Uh, Dushan, hello. Welcome, Serbia. <laughs> uh, Brian, yeah. I, I mean, quite an elaborate loop. And the, the colors on the new stuff, yeah, work so nice. Um, actually, when, when I pitched it, I said, like, this is a remarkably simple build to do on camera versus how it looks. And I, I still think that's kind of true. Like, the effort that went into this build for the look is stunning. Like, the, the case has so much worked out already. And I was really lucky with the, the fittings for the CPU block. Um, it just so happened that they're exactly seven millimeters offset, which is, uh, you know, fortunate. And uh, because of that, I have like a 14 millimeter extender on the left one with a seven mil offset on the front. And then on the left one, the seven mil offset is directly on the distro and the 14 millimeter extender is in front of it. Uh, and that surface from the front of a 14 plus an offset was perfectly in line with the CPU, so the tubes just come up vertically exactly right, and there's no like odd angles, so really lucky. Uh, KO, will you drain the coolant before shipping? Yes, uh, it will be just in case it gets really cold somewhere. That's the main reason. I, I would prefer to ship it with coolant because then if there's any damage, you will see it. Uh, you'll see that the coolant came out, and if it was like domestic transport across Europe, I would do that, but because it's going all the way to Seattle, there is a small chance that it might see uh, freezing temperatures, so it will come out. The drain valve is actually right in between the two pumps. So in the middle of the two case, uh, in the middle of the base, there's two pumps, and where the first pump 
uh, gets fed from the distro and then there's a bridge from the first pump on the outside to the inlet in the middle of the second and then from the second pump it goes out directly forwards into the rads and I put a T there and the drain comes directly back it's kind of hard to access but because I know where it is I can just take out the power supply put a tube in and then just pull the sleeve back and it should unleash most of the coolant from the radiators um, the, the radiators are by far the hardest part to drain because they're vertical even though the ports are at the bottom that's like one up one down and then on the other side up and down so they're the hardest part to fill and the hardest part to drain each radiator has about 700 milliliters of coolant inside i think uh to fill the whole build was just a hair over two liters um it is actually uh, it doesn't look like it it's it's full right now uh, it has clear coolant and i'm definitely gonna keep it i wasn't 100 percent sure um Snef, yeah, Snef's right. Silverstone have a one-to-one -one pin out. So the Silverstone power supplies that are made by Enhance uh, have a one-to-one -one pin out, which is absolutely glorious. Uh, that That is what I would choose if they, if they were a bit more available and, uh, you know, always available in the spec that you want. But they seem to be a bit hard to find. I did have some problems with them being loud um, and I'm really impressed with how quiet the EVGAs are. So that's what we have here. But generally, one other thing to consider, while a one-to-one -one pinout sounds great on paper, uh, it's not the same as making an extension because when it's male to female, uh, the one position remains in the same place. But when it's uh, female to female, then they're no longer in line because they wouldn't make a circuit. So one, the other side is actually flipped. So you can either like swap from the one to the 12 position and twist the wire in one plane and then twist the other half, or you can lay all 12 along and then knit them through the other 12. And depending which way the connectors are positioned on the motherboard to the power supply, depends on which one works best uh, AD I'm, I'm not sure which things affect the temp in the case because it went off screen for me let me see if I can find it uh, are the cooling pipes coated acrylic no they are brass pipes with uh, satin titanium coating the same as the fittings and the same as the CPU block in this uh, special finished version um, they don't really add to the cooling while it's true they will feel hot um, more so than acrylic because they conduct the heat through them quite easily uh, the surface area of the tube this this tiny tube is completely insignificant relative to a radiator when you imagine these radiators have uh, a continuous sheet of copper that's folded over and over and over and over again and like 15 stacks of them and they're all 60 millimeters deep and they have a fan blowing directly through them that's like such a colossal area versus the outside of a tube um, you know the radiator is engineered such that it has the biggest surface area possible whereas a tube being a perfect cylinder has the minimum surface area for its volume um, that's why tubes are so good uh, in loops and why round tubes are better than square tubes or hexagonal tubes not because of the um, forming of them or the making of them or the making of fittings is obviously easier but also they have the smallest perimeter versus cross-section so the least the least restriction Uh, yeah, host, um, temp sensors to control fan speeds, I personally don't like them, I don't like fan speeds being controlled, I'd rather they were just continuous, um, when you have an overkill amount of radiators especially, then 
there's really no reason to ramp them up like the airflow because it's over such a big area is always high even though you can't hear it so um that's what i choose to do especially in big systems and, and even in my rtx system where i only have a 120 rad i just run it quite fast all the time um so i don't like it but if you are doing it the correct way is to use the coolant temperature um in a, in a loop so uh temperature sensor in line with the coolant and then uh change the fan speed based off that because the coolant doesn't change temperature quickly so the fans will respond to the actual heat in the loop and um there should be like minimum uh hysteresis where the fan will suddenly ramp up because of a spike in component temperature which might not be caused by um, sustained heat but just momentary load <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying it Snuff I also found myself looking at it for quite a while instead of working, <laughs> working on it um, I think Overall, I mean, I can't wait to see how it performs, but I'm, I've been really happy with the with the component choice throughout. I don't think it could have really gone any smoother. And the, just the contrast between all the black parts that I found, the RAM, the motherboard, and against the block, it really just duplicates the look of the case where it's that uh, you know, clean silver edge against matte black, so it's really working for me. Uh, TG, this is actually 12 millimeter tubing. It's not 10, 12, it's like 10 and a half, 12. Um, it cut really nice, and that's the first one we have sampled, so um, I didn't have a choice, it's just what we have, but ordinarily I would also use uh, 12 millimeters. Uh, gaming tech. The cable color isn't, yeah, 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 for sure it's a teal. Um, the actual color name is Carbon Turquoise. The sleeve is from MDPC. And they're kind of one of the original beautifiers of PCs. So uh, I like to support MDPC as much as possible. So all of the connectors, wires, crimps, and all the tools, all the parts required for the sleeving were all from uh, MDPC. You should certainly uh, check those guys out. But yeah, it's it's certainly nice uh, to see something that that's not crazy RGB. I, I mean, it's even hard just to find hardware without it. Like I I was surprised. Uh, it's a while since I was actually kind of shopping for PC parts for myself and yeah even even just a couple of three years ago you could get a high-end RAM kit that wasn't RGB and I had the choice of basically two so uh, yeah either Crucial Ballistics or you can find like really old uh, G-Skill Trident Z that's black on black but not much other high-speed well-rated stuff that doesn't come with RGB which is a bit of a shame because I don't know, it, it, people say you can just turn it off and it doesn't compromise how it looks, but to me it certainly does when they've made um, like provision for space and you have like white parts that light up and that is another kind of ethos that I've always pushed on our products as well at EK that if they have RGB it should look like how it should look anyway, you know, it shouldn't have concessions or changes or you know parts of the design sacrificed to fit the RGB. The RGB should work with it. Uh, TG, I could show you the lighting but it's honestly too bright for the set. Um, right now it's configured for the show <laughs> to put it politely so because it will be at PAX and it may not have its own perfect lighting there. The, the top panel, I took out the original DRGB from the case and 
I the only thing I could get over the weekend was a super dense, super bright white 12 volt LED. Uh, but the the strip itself was so wide that I couldn't fit it on the edge, so they don't shine in anymore. But I glued five strips over the top of the case so they shine directly down, and you you get like five stripes the same as the five stripes of the fan girl. So it looks okay for the show, but it's it's too bright for here and it's definitely too bright for a desk i think so i'll be getting some thinner white strips and putting them back down the side when it comes back for now it's it's great to, to stand out in the crowd to stand out without rgb surprisingly as well okay do you know the total weight of the build including the coolant um well the coolant adds two kilos, I know that. Um, I expect that it's around 35 kilos, 30, 35, somewhere around that, it's pretty heavy. Um, just the CPU block being like solid brass. The board isn't an especially light one. The case itself is heavy, the rods are heavy, and the tubing, so yeah, even, even just the Cables are heavy. There's a lot, a lot of copper inside the long lots of sleeving. So yeah, quite a heavy build. Um, the distro plate also adds a lot that a normal case wouldn't have. Uh, TG, yeah, the 400 mil DRGB. Yeah, I obviously have millions of DRGBs like in stock across the road in the EK warehouse, but uh, no use because I have no controller. I don't want to add a controller either because um, I don't want to run a cable to the motherboard. It's that, that simple. Like if there's anywhere in the build I could avoid the wire, that's the option I took. Uh, if, the, if the board had had a power switch somewhere on it, uh, I wouldn't have even wired the power switch. But as it happens, it doesn't. And I thought this is a bit too nice to be using a screwdriver on the pin. So I did actually wire it. You can see that it runs from the top left corner of the board and then it wraps behind, goes along the top edge and I sleeved it in black, not turquoise, so it kind of blends in. Uh, it runs along the top edge and then behind the IO. So it, it goes through just, just here, um, through the PCIe slots behind, along the back of the case and it's all like fixed in place and then diagonally across to the switch. So uh, that's like the only IO and I don't think you could find it. <laughs> TG, yeah, <I'm> not <laughs> I don't really wanna blow any LEDs up for fun. Um, like I said, it's, it's not just the controller like finding place for it does is quite a big nice space at the back because I took the hard drive cages out so behind the power supply there's a nice area with nothing in um, and there I could put the controller but again then it needs power then it needs a cable out to the LEDs cable out to the motherboard not not worth it when I would have it white all day every day anyway Uh, Raging Cajun, uh, we, oh, you're making me think about Cajun spices, amazing. Uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway uh, we will be following up Connect and we will be continue, continually uh, supporting the original Connect as much as we can. So yes, um, certainly we will make sure that the next one is flawless and uh, that shouldn't be, um, how can I put it, should, should, shouldn't have this, the same uh, issues as the first one. I know this is a, a conversation that I have to have on every, every live appearance about Connect, but uh, yeah, genuinely we are working on it and I'm quite excited. We're discussing some nice additions for it. Uh, Nelson, hello Florida. Yep. Uh, this is uh, a 909 EK. I think that's the most popular question of the stream and I completely get it. 
so this was originally built as a mod for CES. Uh, I made it, I made the mod. Um, that was the first time we showed the quantum blocks. So we had uh, the vector for the first time and then the velocity. And we didn't have, you know, radiators, we didn't have fans, we didn't have even pumps at that time. We were just going to show, to show those two parts. So, um, and the fittings, of course, we had torque fitting samples there and they were all like samples then. Um, so we were going to a show and we needed a case to really display those and kind of establish the, the look, if you will, in a build. So my best idea, like my favorite case at the time that fit the, sim the like the minimalist aesthetic of our product and also kind of had the quality of finish that you would expect alongside the EK products was the 909, but the layout was so unfriendly and it would have put like weird uh, parts in the spotlight. And so I had the idea to get two 909s and this, this inside part of the frame was actually cut from the outside of another 909. Uh, so two shells and then everything in between was fabricated from acrylic and it all came together just, the, but the first one had so many issues because the 909 wasn't that wide, but it still had this layout. So to fit the front rads in, I actually had to put an SE on both sides and one of them didn't have any fans at all. So, uh, you know, one set of fans sucked in and then blew it through the back radiator. But from the outside, it looked just like this, but really didn't work on the inside. Um, so after Imwin saw it, they, they loved it. And everyone from EK side who, who was presenting it had such an easy time that we put it into production and we made a run of 200 cases. So this is the last one, which, um, EK had in stock. So it's quite nice that I got to build the mod. The very first 909 EK, uh, which was a product sample, we only had two samples, one which was a build and one which was the studio sample for the shop listing. Uh, I built the very first one in Taiwan, which was uh, really crazy. So I like pre-assembled all the hardware, made all the sleeving, and we didn't have time to post the case from Taiwan to Slovenia and then ship the build back to Computex, also in Taiwan. So we kind of prepared the build, flew there, picked up the first case sample, put it together, worked the first time, and then took it to the show and then brought the whole build back with us. So uh, yeah, from, from there, the first one to now, the last one it was a really nice journey and I'm excited to follow it up. I think having this chance to build it again and see how it works today versus how it worked uh, two years ago has been a really nice chance to find some inspiration on what to do next because trends have changed. You know, the, the first one I was thinking people might want to put well, people will always want to put two GPUs in it. I mean, it's such an expensive case as a statement piece. And at the time, uh, two GPUs was entirely legit. Um, so everything was built around that, the huge radiators and the uh, space for the biggest power supplies, dual pumps, everything was built with like multiple GPU setups in mind. And that's completely fallen out of fashion in that time and now we don't see many people doing it at all so and everyone wants now vertical gpus because they only have one uh brian will there be a new distro plate for the o11 xl yes in the matrix 7 video you did see a revised version it was just it was just a preview it wasn't a, a finished sample because not all of the blocks are finished so we won't finish the distro first but you're right you did see it um, and it will be coming so the the most popular of our current reflections will get updated uh, to be reflection twos or reflection squared and they will get full matrix 7 compliance and we will 
add a few new ones in the coming year. Uh, TG, yeah, exactly, full circle. It's It's been an awesome journey of, of 909. Uh, Nelson, the motherboard, let me try and get these acronyms in order, is an Asus WS Pro X570 Ace. So this is the AM4 workstation board. It's kind of superior in features to the creator in an, in an odd way. Um, but yeah, it's really nice, no complaints so far. Found all of my hardware and it boots a bit faster than other workstation stuff I've had. Uh, I really like the look of workstation grade boards and I had an X99M, which was awesome. So this is basically replacing that. Um, the, the, the second runner in contention for me was the uh, Asus WS C621-64L, which is a bit of a mouthful. And that's basically like a mini Dominus. So LGA3647 socket and it has the same like hex channel layout as the Dominus, so 12 dims, and it's smaller than the Dominus, so it doesn't have the huge extension at the top, and it's like normally ATX size, which was the biggest thing I could fit in the 909. Uh, would, be, would be neat, but I'm happy that I got this blacker one. Uh, yeah, this is uh, case number 164 out of 200. It's not the 200th. I guess that's just how our stock worked. I guess this, one, this was at the bottom of the pile and the, the 200th left before this one. Uh, but yeah, this is, not, this is number 164. Uh, host, any ETA on the Tech Nugget heater? Ooh, Tech Nugget, that sounds nice. I'm very interested in Nuggets, especially now I'm very hungry. Uh, TG, it seems to me that the overlapping sweeping runs from the distro to the middle of the case for the GPU is mandatory to make the lines of the build look good. Let me just read that again. Overlapping sweeping runs from the distro to the middle. So I presume you mean for the cables like behind the Behind the build like my logic was that I wanted all three to be in a line um, And I didn't want any to look straight. I wanted them to look curvy. Uh, it's kind of how I don't know my style is when it comes to cables so uh, yeah, I put like a small curve in the in the eight pins and wrapped the 24 around them. And because the eight pins are long, uh, the 24 pin also helps them from kind of moving outwards, like drifting outwards. And uh, the eight pin was just the closest route. I did think of maybe putting like the eight and the two eights from the GPU into one, so it looked like a pair of 24s. But it just just didn't work out in placement or with the cable guides that I had, so I went with this all in a line and they're all tight to the back of the distro. So rather than being on the back edge of the case, they're one location forwards. And I think that gives you like a much better view and keeps them nicely tucked inside, both under and over the mid plate. Oh, TG, sorry, you meant the tubing. Um, the 90 band has to extend to the middle of the build where the GPU ports are. Um, yeah, so basically with the tube layout, the tricky thing is that we need to provide like some level of modularity so that this works when designing the distro plate that it works for most motherboards. And the only thing that's really fixed is the height of the graphics card. That's always the same because it always goes in a PCIe slot and our blocks were within reason exactly the same thickness so the terminal was always on the same place. Uh, like the, the 
bottom face of the terminal where the fittings mount. So the placement of the ports at the end is made to line up with the Torque 90 on a standard GPU block terminal that runs around and they're just far enough away that you can fit a standard EATX motherboard behind them. A tiny short tubing around from the distro to an FE block. Yeah, it would look strange. Um, although it's surprisingly the FE is barely long, barely longer than where the terminal ends on this, so I'm not sure they'll be that short because the FE is so small. I um, think it might look okay, but I don't know how the height, the height works out. The FE is much newer. Um, it certainly could be solved with the offset fittings, either the eccentric one, the like three mil offset, or the sevens. Uh, Oh, renovation. Sorry that you didn't get notifications. Also, sorry from our side that we really rushed out these streams. We didn't give you much warning. Uh, I also didn't have much warning in uh, what we would do on what stream and how the build is progressing. So yeah, definitely next time we will space things out, give everyone a chance to look at everything and try and do less work off camera because I was surprised that uh everyone enjoyed the really detailed work so that's nice to see um i wasn't sure if you know just the big assembly would be the fun part but now everyone liked the minor like tiny wiring details and interesting stuff that went into it uh renovation thanks yeah um having visions of putting a 12 inch Elongated stats display on the lower PSU shroud. Um, you don't have much space here because the power supply is right behind it, so it would have to be like 12 or 15 millimeters thick. But on the other side, there's a big space, it will go really nice, but then it's uh, kind of in the wrong place, so maybe. Ooh, Jake is, is, is Matt funding a Tech Nugget project. Amazing. Uh, DG, can't wait to see the first person going insane running the tubing to a block with an active backplate. Actually, the 1390 active backplate would be easy from the founder's edition because they have the ports on the conventional location. So I think that will be really straightforward, but for the other GPUs, not so fun for the distro plates. We had no idea that was coming. Um, none of the 10 and 20 series had uh, um, VRAM on the backside. So never imagined that it would come. Uh, and, and in principle, uh, you know, this have the ports on slot one and slot two and that means that if you had like a z170 x5 well z series intel or the um standard series m4 boards that when it's in slot one they will line up and then for the hedt boards and threadripper boards uh when it's one slot lower they'll line up with the other set of ports you can see blank there um and then any Additional GPUs could just be connected in parallel up from there. Uh, TG, can't wait. Oh yeah, parallel flow terminal, please. Yeah, uh, we will address how they fit together when we change the vector twos um, and make them, even if they don't flow in parallel config that they will flow to the distro plates correctly. Uh, Edward, what's the color of the wires? Um, the sleeving is MDPC carbon turquoise and the wire inside is black. I'm not sure if you're asking what the wire or the sleeve was, uh, but the wire color does actually make a difference to the finished appearance of the sleeving. So if you choose like 
a vibrant color, then it's better to put white wire or shiny wire inside or even the actual color. So if you have yellow sleeve, putting yellow wire is a good idea because it will make it that much more vibrant because it is surprisingly translucent. Um, if you have black, then obviously black, the deeper in it is the way to go. Uh, and so in this case, uh, to emphasize the contrast, it's black wire inside. Uh, TG, yeah, I'm sure you'll have a great time with the with the FE Active Backplate. It's really special, and you can even like configure it a little bit. There's a there's a plate inside which you can switch the direction of flow, uh, and they run in sequence. And you can use two ports on the end, or two ports on the side, or one of each. So uh, I think that's the best of all worlds. Now it's made in two pieces on the FE, obviously. Had to be special because it's an FE. Uh, Renovation, you should organize a custom build battle. Yeah. But maybe not with the Verge. Maybe, you know, we could pick a slightly less easy target. Uh, KO, is that a custom made plate to cover the second integrated cable comb insert on distro? Uh, no, everything here was included with the case. So you got um, enough plates to make three sets of 24 pins in case you had like uh, SLI lightning graphics cards that had three eight pins. So uh, you could make 24, 24 and 24. Then you had three sets of dual eights. So if you had uh, two ASLI with two eight pins and two eight pin EPS on your board. Um, and then there were, so that's three sets of dual eights, three sets of 24s, two sets of um, single eight pins, just in case they were like spread out and you had an eight pin on one side and an eight pin on the other. Some boards did, some boards didn't. Um, and then you had eight blanking plates uh, one plate with a big hole for a USB cable. That one didn't have a whole set, like to make the front, the back of the distro and the top, but just one plate that you could use to come out from the bottom chamber with like miscellaneous cables. And then you could route them, you know, over the top of the motherboard tray. And lastly is the numbered plate. So uh, the plate, I have it right beside the memory at the bottom where you can see the number of the case and every single case got just one. Uh, TG, yeah, absolutely. No, com no comms at the best comms. Uh, if your cables can just magically stay in place, that's, that's what they should do. Uh, Matt the Knife, any advice for someone attempting custom wiring? Like, don't do it or anything to watch out for attempting it for the first time. Um, if you're attempting it for the first time, definitely first watch Lutro's videos. Um, and in addition to that, there is also a thread on Overclock Net Forum with a big list of uh, power supply pinouts from different power supplies. If it's your first time, Honestly, I would buy a power supply specifically that's easy. If you go get a, a Silverstone with the one-to-one -one pin out, then for the first time you only have to make straight wires. It's going to simplify it a lot. Don't try and do a pattern or do try and do a pattern if it helps. And just practice a lot. The actual physical act of doing it is just like bending tubes. You know, as soon as you get a feeling for the uh, softening of the of the sleeve, which varies depending on which sleeve you have, what material it is, just exactly the same as like knowing PETG versus acrylic. It's like PET sleeving or uh, whatever alternative. PET is the nicest to work with for me. Um, and then from there, like taking it from learning the the way the material reacts to getting good results is consistency. So you need to be really delicate with every operation 
that you duplicate wires perfectly. Um, make one. If you if you're trying to make an an, an eight pin EPS, for example, and all eight wires are the same length, um, then cut one and copy the same one. Don't cut one, cut the second, and then copy cable two to make cable three, and then copy cable three to make cable four, because you will have like uh, an incremental deviation, and your last one could be shorter or longer, and then if you do that again when you cut the sleeving, then you'll find that you've made all the sleeving random versus your wire length, and then you put it together, and you end up with a completely like wobbly cable that's doing its own thing. So yeah, just learn the materials, work with them, and then try and be as consistent as you can. Ultimately, everyone ends up with a slightly different method. It's almost like therapeutic after a while becomes a, a kind of habit and uh, it's really fun in a different way, some strange kind of torture, but I think it's one of the best ways to express some form of uh, creativity in a build and to have like some organic element to go with all of the technical stuff is really nice so I like cables I don't over control them I don't like uh, combs I don't like having like uh, uh, knit not knitted and I'm trying to say but stitched cables like some people stitch them together you can put like fine cotton through the through the sleeving and hold them in a place or like waxy waxy cotton I don't know um, but I just like to get the best kind of form I can out of having all the wires the right length basically um, and I think the, the same advice I would I would also give to someone undertaking a build like of that nature. Really, the the main difference between a formidable result and uh, average result it's not just uh, being good at it, but it's seeing when you're bad and having the ruthlessness to say, "No, I'm going to do that again until I'm consistent." Uh, you know, I'm going to repeat that tube until it's perfect. I'm going to repeat that wire or you know even having the courage to throw away like 10 hours work that you made on your first 24 pin and repeating it because you know until you've met your own standards and you set them as high as you want you won't be truly happy with the build so uh not not sure what, what, what that name is. I'm not gonna pronounce it as the letters look in English because I'm sure it will be hideously wrong. Uh, but hi, uh, at this time you can't buy the brass tubes yet, but they're coming. Uh, we're testing them and this is like our, fir our first live test of them. Um, we, we showed the raw material on Expo and this is uh, one chance we got to use them in a build. Um, so we're also figuring out what tools will be best to provide to you. So I, I tried out a bunch of different tools when making this. Um, I'm quite happy that we got good results with it. It was easy. Um, I think people will do just fine with it. But it also, um, because you won't be able to like plate the tubing yourself after you've made a shape from it, that will restrict people to pre bends so like the 90s that we have here on straight tubing, not a problem if everything is metric seven compliant. So uh, I think this will make sense very soon. Nick, I'd be really interested to see a more industrial style build using QDCs and manifolds in the future. Absolutely. Yeah, that's definitely something we'd look to include in the lives. And if you would just donate seven a100 gpus then we'll get right to it uh <laughs> seriously like uh every build would be a a huge manifold industrial build if i had the chance like you, you can see that i'm i don't naturally uh pursue the the gamery aesthetic like the crazy rgb uh, i'd really love the industrial stuff and 
yeah, if I had a chance, I, I would have had the, the C621 64 lane board, but then you need, you know, four GPUs to look good, 12 RAM dims, uh, and things get crazy real fast. So yeah, I hope we have the availability of parts and, and budget for stuff like that on some builds. Uh, TG saw the EK fill bottle there, so maybe a, P a PSA that the tip is removable. Yeah, you don't need to cut it off, you can just pull it off. I have cut it off myself before, but you can also just pull it out. <laughs> uh, Renovation, will EK be offering chrome tubing? Uh, we won't be offering chrome chrome, we will offer nickel. So exactly the same finish as we have on the fittings, we will offer on the tubing. So that means you will get uh, nickel, you will get black, which is actually the same finish as the satin titanium, but it's just black in color. Um, and satin titanium, and I really hope gold as well. Horse, there's going to be need for the tech nugget heater. How are we going to heat the nuggets? Uh, good, good to hear that you'll be waiting. They will be coming for sure. Um, I'm trying to think back to like other eventful parts in the build. Really, pretty straightforward. I think everything we covered with the with the streams was the difficult parts. Um, so when we we're trying to put the radiator in from the back. Uh, okay, making the 24 pin was seriously stressful. I don't think many people would have stuck with me if that was live. Uh, maybe next time I'll need it for moral support. <laughs> uh, Seth, not sure if you already answered this, but will EK be doing more unique cases like this? Yes, absolutely. More unique cases for sure. More of this exact case, definitely not. So this was a limited series of 200. I think because it went so smoothly next time around, uh, maybe a few more than 200. Uh, but we always want to try and offer more. We're looking into lots of different cases, lots of different collaborations, as well as uh, you know, establishing our influence on the case market so they can make water cooling as easy as possible, no, no matter who it is, whether it's uh, a competition or a partner or someone we're literally building the case with, like Inwin. Um, we want to help everyone move forwards and make cases that are better looking and friendlier for loops. So, uh, yeah. Kao, was it daunting when screwing the motherboard and fittings onto the distro? given that this case was the last one. Uh, it, it, it was the last one, but you know, when you have the right contacts, there, there are more plexi, <laughs> more plexi distros available, even at short notice, you'll be uh, glad to hear. So, you know, just in case someone has a disaster, they're still out there. We didn't have many disasters, I think. Um, there weren't any major problems with fittings or with the standoffs. The, the standoffs are in like a solid, really solid piece of plexi. This is not like dainty or, or thin anywhere at all. This is an absolutely massive slab. Uh, it had to be that wide so that it can have the big chunky terminals that, that bolt it from the sides and to get that look that it's completely suspended in the case. Um, and unlike most distros where the front side that seals is like a plate on the top, um, this actually has it cut inside and, uh, and the lid goes inside the distro. So that block around it is absolutely massive. Um, so I wasn't worried at all putting the standoffs in. I have a good feeling for how strong Plexi is and you know, so long as you don't get a uh, a massive allen key and start using the long side where you have huge torque available 
it goes pretty nice. So I just had a I fix it handle and no problem. Uh, but they're they're in there pretty tight, you know. I don't don't want it coming off. Uh, that aside, I don't think there was much to say about filling it. It it was super smooth. Um, there's like a pretty big distro inside. Uh, a pretty big reservoir capacity inside the distro. One thing that uh, did happen, it was kind of funny, uh, because the coolant went both down into the pumps and backwards into the CPU block, there was like a big pocket of air at one point where the air was pushing the coolant around, not the coolant, which is kind of funny. Yeah, host, no breaker bars. No, forget it. It's plexi, you don't need it. Uh, if you have a breaker bar for anything in your PC, I think it's been going wrong. Um, you know, a motherboard won't like that kind of treatment either. And PCBs aren't much or if at all stronger than Plexi, so uh, might want to consider getting a slightly more precise tool set. Also, no real reason to apply heat. <laughs> um... Yeah, trying to trying to think if there's any more wisdom I can impart. So uh, now it's time to uh, snap any solution for debubbling the distro plates after initial filling. Uh, this still has small bubbles inside even now. I'm I'm pretty sure. Uh, but just just a matter of time. I mean, uh, these huge radiators also have a massive volume of coolant and consequently quite a big volume of air and bubbles inside so it just needs to run uh needs to go through like first pump on off cycles then pump speed cycles from slow to fast and then also heat cycles make a big difference so uh you know the coolant's a bit more free-flowing when it's really hot so uh that's also good to get air out so just just use it basically as soon as you're confident there's no air stuck in the blocks and you can see that the, the coolant's moving properly uh, good speed because it should be especially with serial D5s uh, then you can just be patient and wait for the small bubbles uh, ha have seen tips of putting dish soap inside but it's also resulted in very soapy loops for me in the past so uh, I don't want to give that advice, but uh, I'm sure others will. And yeah, so now it's got to get drained. I hope that goes roughly as, as straightforward as the filling did and then packaged up safely and shipped off the packs will probably take the GPU out for maximum maximum safety and then wrap up like all the ends of the cables and fill in uh, the back and front side of the build so that the distro doesn't get like loaded by any shock so the front side will get filled up to the distro and the same from the back and then it will go back in its original shipping box and whisk away to packs so it will get sent with two other builds which we have and a bunch of other kit for the stand so when it's all packed together on one pallet everyone has to use a forklift and hopefully uh you know no no dropping and everything goes smoothly we didn't have any problem shipping the previous 909 home from taiwan so uh i'm quite confident to send all my <laughs> all my parts out but uh hopefully they'll be back and when they do come back i think we'll get it back here in the studio OS installed, maybe some benchmarking, bit of overclocking, we can find out how good my Ryzen and my Radeon are, how well they clock, and maybe even play some games. So if you're excited to see that and you want to come back and check out more builds in the future, more content from a new modding room, get the official guide, then uh, subscribe to 
all of our channels where we'll be streaming from and most importantly stay cool in the rest of the summer because <laughs> it's extremely hot here and you need two 480s just for yourself so uh until pax uh see you all have a great time and hopefully we'll catch up when everyone's home bye